Hello, Steph Infection listeners. Thank you for continuing to listen to my gross podcast with my amazing guests. I'm going on a big Filth Queen tour. Here are my dates. Please, if I'm in your city or you have friends that you think will like me, send them to my live shows. I'm way funnier live. I will be in Orlando, Florida at the Improv on September 7th. The Tampa Improv, September 8th and 9th. Then I'm heading to Vancouver, Canada for the Great Outdoors Festival on September 15th. Then I will be in Punchline, Sacramento, September 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Then one night in San Fran at Cobbs. Then I will be in Madison, Wisconsin, Comedy on State on October 5th to 7th. I'll be in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, back in the motherland at the Laugh Shop, Calgary, October 12th to 14th. Then I will be in Vegas at Wise Guys, which is super fun. Come see me in Vegas if you're there. Then uh, at the end of October, the 27th to 29th, I'll be at the La Jolla Comedy Store, close to San Diego. That's that for now. Got a big announcement coming out on the 24th about some big new dates coming more on the East Coast because people are up my ass. And don't forget about my big Toronto show on December 14th for crying out loud. If you're in Toronto, come to the Danforth Music Hall. It's a very big deal for me. It's almost sold out. I'm not doing two shows. Thank you. Bye. Steph Infection is back and Brittany Furlon is here and she's amazing. She's hilarious. And she's made me switch sides. If you're watching this on YouTube, I've never sat on this side and I feel uneasy and nuts. It's a whole other ball game now. My my Steph Infection sign looks pretty good behind you. That's, that's, this is great. How the hell are you? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, every fucking podcast that I've done lately, though, they put me on my bad side. And I was like, that's it. I'm standing my ground. If I'm going to drive no. to Burbank, yeah. I want to sit on my <laughs> good side. How far did you drive from? From Calabasas. Oh, shit. So yeah, like you're getting hour. your good side. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? I'm sorry. I'm like, fuck, it's not your fault I live all the way out yeah, there. What the but, fuck you know are you doing out there? Yeah. Well, you, you know, you're well, out there. you get married yeah. and then, you know, you become suburban. You try, you uh-huh, know, try uh-huh. to fit in. Do you, oh do you talk to your neighbors out there? I do actually. I actually really like my neighbors are all like eighty. Okay. Well, like they're like they're like uh well one's like fifty but they're mostly older because it's like uh-huh. a, basically like a very old neighborhood and it's really sweet like they're just nice people. Uh-huh. I'm not used to that. You know, like I was used to living in West Hollywood where you'd see your neighbor and you'd like hide. You know what I mean? Yeah, or you'd yeah, be yeah. like oh shit and try not to make eye contact. These neighbors literally bring us cookies and shit. They do. Like it's like I feel like I live in like North Carolina or something. Like it's very very weird like they'll come over and they'll be like hi and one of the guys name is skipper no like that's his human name skipper like it's like hey skip yeah like literally <laughs> born in like what 1948 yeah, yeah. like they just back in the day anymore. when yes. the model yeah, t yeah, was yeah. around like hey skip can you pass me the wrench for the model t like literally oh my and god he, and he's so sweet and his wife bakes cookies and every time she bakes cookies skipper comes over to the house and this guy's got to be like 90 oh my god he so hops over to the week. house and he gives us cookies are they good do you eat them or they're no? so good you eat them, really? yeah old people cookies are great I think it's just flour and sugar <laughs> I mean, and old people's skin just <laughs> scraping it. I, I, whenever anyone makes me anything, I, I like to see their house. <gasps> oh, because you're like, I don't know. Ooh. I I saw one time someone make weed cookies and she licked every finger Ew, and, then, and then started no. kneading the dough again. And I was like, well, now I'm, I'm sucking her fingers. Uh, okay. I know. So that's why I, I don't want to ruin Skip's cookies over here, but it, it makes me... I'm sad. Okay, so I am very OCD like that too. And when I was in elementary school, I would never bring any eat anyone's gifts that they brought in. You know what I mean? Someone's yeah. birthday. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The never. cupcakes. No, I wouldn't Even touch that kid? shit. Yeah, because I saw fucking the kid picking his nose. Oh, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. I know you were in the kitchen helping. Yeah. <laughs> and I know you didn't wash your hands. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, So I yeah. never ate any of that shit. But yeah, my neighbors are great. I mean, it's a great neighborhood. It's very cute. I had um, OC as a kid too. And I used to like Did eat you? french fries and then bite it to the bottom. And the, the nub that I touched, I'd put in a pile. How fucked is that? 
You had OCD too. I used Did to. We not all have it. I had it really bad to the point that I would have to run up and down my stairs eight times oh, before I left. The house. No, I didn't have that. That's psychotic. <laughs> I'd have to like flip my light switch up and down okay. a certain uh, amount of times. Did you have like the checking the oven and stuff? Yeah, the, the my lock curling the door iron. Thing? I had to like go unplug okay, it, replug yeah, it yeah. back in, unplug it, replug oh it back in. God. I'm like, did you unplug it? Yes, you did. Now you're plugging it back in just to make sure that you're <laughs> oh my, actually unplugging it. Oh my yeah. God. It's weird. Fuck. Yeah, it's, I'm very neurotic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. didn't realize, I know, because you did slob. I was like, I had so no idea. Because what you see online of you, I, was, I had no clue. You seem no. so put together. And no, so, I'm like... very mentally ill. <laughs> like, very deranged. <laughs> like, oh, I'm, we all are. <laughs> yeah, but, like, I've, like, something's very wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, squeezing my hand right was, now. And I, I do want to mention, she did bring... S- through two juices and snacks. Like this is a fucking ASMR fucking, just you eating a banana quietly and then popcorn. Just like two really- <laughs> Like I'm gonna be here sounding. for a week. I bought <laughs> yeah. like rations. Like I got my rations. Here we go, just in case I got get hungry. You know? pink Himalayan salt I did. popcorn. This okay. stuff's so good by the way, non-GMO. I just do a brand deal. I know, I'm like, do you, I'm like, do you work for these people? I can't do popcorn. I, I just like my teeth, I get too annoyed. Really, you can't yeah, eat I have one. I have one, one kernel, it's in there. Not it's even large. At the movies? I do at the movies and then I have to go to the washroom and, and I bring the floss stick with me because I'm annoyed by it. I don't know. Do I have big gaps? Not really. But I get, one kernel sets me off. When's the last time you went on a date? Oh, well, on the last podcast I just discussed, it was last night and it was horrendous. It was horrendous? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said he's going to be friends. It was psycho. I can't get into oh, it. It was no, really bad. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay. We oh, I also went on another bad date and uh, I didn't bring this one. I went on another date when I was in Austin. Oh, wow. With a guy from Austin? Uh-huh. And how'd that go? Well, he had a black eye and he said that his ex-girlfriend uh, beat him up two days ago. So I was like, oh, that's not good. Why am I here? <laughs> Why am I here? Kind of smelt. Didn't have his teeth showing in any photos. And I was like, oh, that's didn't, a- didn't have any. <laughs> well, I'd, rather, I'd rather he had none <laughs> than uh, the ones he had. Like Halloween teeth. You oh, know when you see those no. like, de- like really gray in no. the middle? Like a lot of. And I, I got I got a tooth problem. You're like, do those come out or? I, yeah, I they should so they can be soaked in formaldehyde. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those need to come out, soak in bleach and lime, and then go back in your mouth. <gasps> no, um, I, I got a big teeth problem. How did you meet him? On I was like Tinder. I was like on Tinder when I was there, and then we went like a day date, and I was like, I actually bought this vintage shirt. I love we the shirt. Vintage shopping, yeah. but he was like up my ass, not looking at anything, just like over my shoulder, and I was like, oh, you're gonna do that the whole time? Like I wanna. He's like, I don't got any money, but you got a nice mouth. <laughs> I was like, just breathing yeah, on you. God. Just like, what's it like to have a regular mouth? <laughs> <laughs> that was what it felt like. Um, oh, my God. You have nice teeth, but you, I Thank feel like you. a lot of people have bad teeth. They do. Actually, I had horrible teeth. Do you know that I had my jaw broken on purpose by the doctor when I was 16 because I had what fr- like bulldogs have? I had an underbite. underbite. Really? Horrible. I look like this. That far out? Yeah. Oh my God. No, very far. So basically, what happened was my, I had like a, a, a I have a big chin already. People call me, um, what is it called? Crimson chin. You know, the, the fucking meme oh, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I yeah, do yeah. kind of look like that. Um, <laughs> but it's crazy uh, because my jaw was even bigger. And oh, what had fuck. happened when I was, well, I was already born with like deformities. I was born with my feet backwards. Like I had my. <laughs> what? I was born with clubbed feet turned in all the way facing backwards. Oh, so my. I couldn't, I wasn't supposed to be able to walk. So, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. So my birth certificate, my feet are upside down. Oh, my. Yeah. So your heels are forward. Yeah. And your toes are twinkling yeah. back. <laughs> twinkling back. Wow. And so my feet were completely backwards when I was born, turned all the way backwards, facing backwards. And so I had a surgery when I was like two. where so they kept them like that for two years? Yeah, they had to be. There was no surgery yet for club feet disorder. Oh it was 1986. God. Yeah. So they had just, there was a doctor at the Philadelphia Children's Hospital who had just just specialized in this surgery and he'd only done like two or three kids but it worked and he took me in oh and my, God. my parents were like it's a risk she you know either she doesn't walk or you know we try the surgery and yeah. it could also be that she doesn't walk but or it could fix it right so they take me in Fuck. as a baby yeah they cut open both my ankles looks like like girl interrupted style oh. and they taper my achilles tendon so that it loosens so that my foot comes back forward 
Yeah, and then I wore casts. Like oh. I had two giant casts on my legs for the first five years of my life. Holy shit. Yeah. And then I had to go to physical therapy to learn how to walk when I was six. And do you have like full feeling in your feet now? It's like I do. Feel? They're shaped really weird, my feet. Like they curve. They like, because of being curved to go backwards. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they're shaped very strangely, um, which is weird because my husband has a foot fetish. So I'm like, you like these weird bow and arrow feet? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Okay. He, well, uh, he does. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he, he likes really them, does. I guess. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I try to make them look good. Um, um, but yeah, they're weirdly shaped, and I have the scars going up each of my ankles. But oh yeah, my God. so it's weird. Was that weird for your like? Also, your mom giving birth to that? Were they like? Did they know before you came out? That they didn't. Oh fuck. no! Till so I came, came out, out, they were like, "I'm they sorry." They were like, "Your feet are not the right yeah. way." <laughs> yeah, they're like, "She's got all her fingers and toes, but something's askew." Your daughter down there. is a dolphin. Yeah, like they was like is... very fucking wrong. Huh. Yeah, yeah. So, so my parents were so upset, and then my mom was so upset when I was younger because she'd have to stroll me around in a stroller, and I had two casts on my legs, and people would give her dirty oh, looks, think thinking like she dropped me down the stairs or, the stairs yeah, yeah, or yeah. something. They were like, "What a shitty parent!" You know, why is up oh, with this fuck. baby have these casts on? Oh, yeah, because you don't see casts on babies. No, ever. When's the last time you saw a little tiny baby? with casts. Oh, yeah. Never. Yeah, yeah. They must have been looking at you. They were sure. staring. Oh, they were God. like, what a horrible mother, delinquent, <laughs> delinquent. You know what I mean? But they don't know the story. Um, she's so going to be like, her feet were born yeah, backwards every time. Yeah, she was fucking time. born this way. She's a freak. Yeah. <laughs> American Horror Story freak show. Um, but yeah, so then it got worse as I got older because then like usually when you're born with like one birth defect, like there's more that come along uh -huh. as you get older. So... Basically, what happened was my jaw would just kept growing, and my top jaw, my top jaw stopped growing, and so my bottom jaw got really big. And I literally, they, I got braces, and they straightened my teeth, and my bottom teeth were completely like, okay, so here's my top teeth, yeah. here's my bottom teeth. They were that completely far this far, like almost a half an inch. Oh my god! So when I was sixteen, did you have a way to lisp? I didn't have a lisp, but I did. I does like Keira Knightley. Okay. I was like, you guys, are you like Karen Knightley? Yeah, you talk like this. I almost hate doing it because I'm like, is it going to go back is to that? Like, I'm like scared. I'm like, I keep trying to push it back. I sleep with like a fucking chin strap on. No, you like, don't. Do you actually? No, but I want to because oh I feel like it's still growing. It's not I feel growing. like it is. It's not. Okay. You're going crazy. It's don't. big though. I keep trying to push it back. People pay for these shins. Everyone's getting know. fucking filler there now. I know. It's weird. I would. I was thinking about it. <laughs> I was when I the Glenn Close chin. chin. Yeah, That's yeah, what it is. Really yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Joker chin. Um, but yeah, so then what happened was they literally at 16 years old in high school, they break my fucking jaw, break all the bones in my face because they have to re. Someone just punches you in the face. Bro, like, what well, I'm like, unconscious. How do they do this? Like, I know the doctor. This? I'm like, so what's the surgery? And then like I look at the tape and it's just him punching yeah. me. Until <laughs> <laughs> just fucking, you stupid bitch. Yeah, yeah. Just, just taking all his aggression yeah, yeah. out. But no, it was it was crazy. Crazy. Like they literally broke every bone in my face. But, like, but how do they break it? Like that's honestly. They go like... in and they use a little hammer, just like when they do a nose job, and they they reformed all my bones and they put I have plates in my face because they had to reform my bones so that they pulled my top jaw forward a little bit, but they mostly pulled my bottom jaw back. back in? But they had to make sure that my everything still lined up so I could chew. Yeah. I mean, it's a serious surgery. I was in surgery for like eight hours. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. And then my head, I got out of surgery and I remember waking up. Just and I was, my head was this big. Oh, yeah. Because I was so swollen from all the trauma. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. And they were like, How do you feel? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. And my jaw was wired shut because when you do all that, yeah, your yeah, jaw, yeah. you have to do, mm -hmm. they have to wire and it because get, so like you can't move. Thing. I guess straw. The, I the food. drank food for mm -hmm. a year. A, a year. That's how many stop. bones were broken in my face. Yes, an entire fucking year. Kanye through the wire. I relate. Like you yeah, didn't yeah. chew a food. No, for an entire year I was on insure. I got so skinny. My dad used to go to McDonald's and he would blend a burger and fries in a blender and be like, "Here you go." And I was like, Ugh. "Like oh I was like, my I can't do that." God, no, that's like, yeah, yeah, that's bad. It's horrible. So just yeah. smoothies all the time. That's it, and sure, mostly, yeah. And then, like, after a year, oh, just drinking, drinking liquids, I, a soup, you know, mm -hmm. applesauce, I could kind of get through. But the fucked up part was is that I couldn't brush my tongue because I couldn't get to it. So this whole, th the oh whole year, God. I got my jaw wired shut, and I can feel the buildup. Like, like, if you don't fucking brush your tongue, that scraper. shit mm -hmm. will build, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, you will grow fucking some a petri fuss? dish bacteria shit on your tongue and i could feel it inside my mouth and it was thick uh -oh. and when God. they opened my mouth for the first time the smell i will never forget 
Like it was like halitosis on fire. Oh, like that's what it was. God. Even the dentist was like, <laughs> <laughs> he almost like passed out. He was like, he was like, like give me mask. I just need a second. <laughs> oh my just god. Died. No, it was but so he knew bad. That you step. couldn't like how will you? But yeah, how was they knew. I mean, they were used to this is what happens. But I mean, not a ton of people are getting their jaw wired shut. So that it was like every day. You gag. Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. I would try to rinse with mouthwash, but I could feel like it, like, and then swallow it. Uh, I'm going to go home and, like, scrape my tongue. Oh, I scrape my tongue so good now every day because I'll never forget not being able to. Oh, my God. And so I literally, like, there was, like, a film, and it was, like, like, literally, like, that thick on my tongue that they had to take off. It was nasty as fuck. It was so bad, dude. That's, and you couldn't floss? No, you couldn't do anything. I mean, I could oh. use the little, um, what are they called? Like the stick things mm-hmm, or whatever, mm-hmm. but that's it. I couldn't get in. No. You know, I would try with sticks and stuff through the gaps in my teeth, but I had so much wire keeping my jaw from moving that I couldn't really get through the wire. It was And bad. they needed a year? What, that's That was the exact time? Like, what the heck? broke so many bones in my oh face. My. I mean, it, I, like how know, many even, when they took the, even when they took the wire off and I could finally open my mouth, I remember being a little nervous that my jaw was just gonna fall off it's because like it was off. sore. It was like they literally unhinged my jaw and rehinged it. So it was kind of like the first time, like that How I was chewing the first time. It was weird. Feel? Yeah, it was really weird. And actually, I had like rubber talking. Uh, yeah, and talking because like they don't even. Then when they take the wire off, then I had rubber bands. Oh yeah, to yeah, hold yeah. it just uh-huh. so it wasn't too intense the first couple uh-huh. times of using it and. Oh God, I went through oh, so much. Fuck. It was crazy. I went through so much. Shit. I was like, so you're like, you have nice teeth. I'm like, I fucking better have nice yeah, teeth. Yeah, Jesus Christ. I fucking better, <laughs> right? And then I go to the dentist recently and he goes, you know, I've never had a cavity or anything, thank God, oh, God. after all the shit yeah. I've fucking yeah. been through. And he goes, you know what, you need now? And I'm like, what? And he goes, your gums are receding. We need to do a gum graft. I'm like, no, I've had fucking enough. Yeah. Because you done. know what they do with that, right? No. Because I've had this done already. And this is perfect for your podcast because it's disgusting. They go on the top of your mouth. They cut a square of skin off of the roof of your mouth, peel it off, sew it. Here, because this is where I have the receding. See the receding? Sew it they there. sew it here, and then it heals, and it grows more gum, so that your gums don't no. recede. And I've no. had it done twice already, no. Steph. We're okay? keeping the gums as is. I'm like, I've had it fucking two gum. How long is that? It to heal up there. Then you got to wear a, ret- a plastic retainer to protect it f- to let it heal for about a month and a half. I like the I way, went through fucking I was gonna say, I like the way I was like doing these stories, and you mentioned one, and then now these were not. I was like, these are not even. You might be the perfect guest for this. Podcast. No, it's horrible. I've been through this so much medical stuff. Crazy. It's a nightmare. So like, yeah, they they did it to me twice too. Like they did one when I first got the wires off. Then they had to cut the top of my mouth and do the yeah. the, the bottom part of my teeth for some reason. When they did this jaw surgery, it re- causes re- it caused receding on my bottom oh, gums. God. I'm like a fucking ninety year old, and so they were like, okay, we got to do the graft. And so they did the no. graft, and then they they now they want to do a third one. I'm like, I can't no. take this no, anymore. No, you, it's done now. I can't. Take uh, it also, how far can they really recede? Doesn't it stop. I mean, Wait, your, your teeth go? get uh, loose and fall out. So listen. Oh, I don't so like my that. teeth started getting loose. <laughs> so look in my mouth. How they look? What's going on there? Yeah. Yeah. So because my gums are receding so badly, my teeth started to get loose to the point they were gonna fall out, so they just put a, a metal wire but behind all my bottom to teeth. To keep them in there. I'm, I'm, I've been going through it. This is crazy. It's crazy. The, right? I was like, you know, the like, first 20 minutes like, we talk about whatever, but we this is fucking crazy. Right? People don't know. People just look at people on Instagram and they're like, what a great life. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. She's so lucky. Like, I'm like, she's so lucky. <laughs> she's a star. And like, and I have like, my fucking jaws falling off. Yeah. And like, I'm, like, I'm all put together with like screws and bolts. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay. Th- these were the fuck. It's fucked up, right? Yeah. I mean, I've fucking been through a lot you of have. shit. And it's then, really bad. It's really a lot. Good God. I Medically wise, it's just yes. stressful. It's very stressful, yeah. And then you, okay, so for the people who don't know, you were big on Vine. I was, right? yes. yes. Back in the back 2014, 15, yeah. Mm-hmm. I yeah. missed the whole Vine thing. And that's where I came from. But actually, yes. uh, none, and, but you've been doing comedy for a long time. Well, I, did stand, I came out here and did stand up when I was like 2005. Yeah. And it was when like Gerard Carmichael was starting and all these people were starting. We were all friends. Mm-hmm. Like Gerard used to like, walk my dog sometimes when I was at work like it was like a great community of people yeah 
and uh, and then I got on a TV show, and then I stopped because I was like, I've made it, and then mm-hmm. it, you know, just like a nightmare. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. so then I finally was like, after Vine, I got really bad anxiety. It's a long story. I told this on Slots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got bad anxiety, yeah. and I was like, okay, I'll just do what I can do in my house. And yes, Vine yes, was yes, perfect because yes. I didn't have to leave the house. And then when that ended, I was like, okay, now you know, the, I was like, I got to conquer my fear again. Mm-hmm. I got to not be you know, social anxiety nightmare. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm like throwing myself back out there. But I was gonna tell you, I have like literal mini heart attacks before I go on stage. Like yes. I literally have my heart goes like 180. And I don't know, it's just like, I just, I don't know what it is. I have such bad anxiety. Even like, it doesn't matter what show, like any show before you go Any on. show, even the tiniest little like piece of shit. No one thing. gives a shit. You're still freaking because out. Because I don't know what it is. I'm just an anxious person in general, and okay. I always want to do so good. Mm-hmm. So I give myself so much pressure. You know what I mean? Yes. And then I get like very, very anxious. But you don't, huh? You seem like very. You don't. Um, I don't. But I will say, I did a taping the other day for Don't Tell. Do yeah. Don't tell tapings. Um, mm-hmm. I bombed harder than I bombed in ten years. Well, I but, bo- you're, but you're very funny, so it's like it's gonna happen. Whatever. Oh no, no! But this was just like it, it was real humbling. I was a yeah. bit smug with that day on the phone with my manager about something. I was like, yeah, I'm being smug. I don't need to do this, blah, blah. Then I was like, I get to the set and I go on. Yeah. And immediately they hate me. Like I walk out and everyone else was doing quite well. I walk out and he, like I'm like, hey. And some girl goes, ah. And I'm like, like excuse you, me? Like you scared I go, her. I scared you that badly? She's like, yeah. And I was like, okay. So I keep talking to the guy in front of him. I go, did I scare uh, the forehead too? And then everyone goes, come on. And I was like, guy's got a large forehead. And now the crowd is like <gasps> repulsed by me. Like they're fucking angry. And I'm like, and I took a sweat. And I was like, okay. I'm like, all right, you guys. I literally said, I'm like, you guys fucking hate me. And it's like oh, a 10 camera yeah. setup. It's a big ordeal, whatever. The, the tapes also look really fucking good. Where does this go? They, they put it on the internet, but it's like they have a huge following. So it does, it does well. It helps grow your fucking following and stuff. It helps like put good jokes out there. I do one joke. Zero laughs, and I go, okay. Start trying to do some more crowd work. Nope, fuming. A guy brings out his phone and starts recording me. And I was like, he's probably recording. Steph Hill was bombing her dick right now. Like, it was so fucking bad. I literally was sweating to the point. My favorite joke I do right now is where I see my pussy looks like Zoidberg Futurama. It got so little laughs. I was like, oh no, it knows what Futurama is. And I got like so pissed. I got in my car, I walked off stage, grabbed my stuff, eyes welded up with tears. Aww. I cried the entire way home. And I, I like cried myself to sleep. And I have not done that. There, and I'm though. like, Oh yeah, but I'm like, it was just real humbling. This career really isn't puts it you crazy back that your... you can still do. You're so funny. So like, I I mean, this is what happens. And every big comic has even told me this. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, oh no, and I I know, but it's like it, it really was just like it was it was eye opening, and it was just <laughs> it just really it, it's something about this career just doesn't let you ever have like a real long high. But then mm-hmm. the night after I did three shows and I killed, and I was like, well, yeah. I'm funny again. I see. It's been a lot. Okay, wait. I need, I've had need... so many people come up to me and tell me that you're so funny. And people don't really do that. Well, who's doing that? That's Just bizarre. random people at the comedy store. And like random people will be like, oh, I saw you posted a video with that girl, Steph. She's funny. I went to her show. Oh, that's nice. So people come up and say that. Like, well, just that so you is know, very People kind. do talk about you. So are they going to post this video no. So that's the, one, okay, that's the best good, thing. Good, good, they're like, okay. if you don't want it anywhere, I'm like, it's getting erased. Yeah. Throw delete, it down a well. Delete. It's bad. Yeah. No, no, it's bad. It's bad, it's bad, it's bad I mean, bad. but like who also like what I, so I try to psych myself out. I think I get so nervous because I put pressure on myself. Yeah. That that, you know, it's not even about like them, it's about me. And mm-hmm. like, I want everything to be perfect. It's the OCD, like yeah, perfection, yeah, 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 you know yeah. what I mean? So I get in my own head because I have a certain a- way I like to do my set. And I'm like, okay, gotta hit this, this, mm-hmm, this. Don't mm-hmm. forget this joke, da 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 da. So I get almost like, it's almost like memorizing it. And then like, what if I forget something, blah, 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 right? Yeah. So I get kind of in my own head and I get really, really anxious. But I'm already an anxious person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been doing the, the, the comedy as a way to kind of get through the anxiety. And is it helping? I think I'm gonna build a new neural pathway okay, okay. i think okay, i am okay, i okay, really okay. know from the first time i went on stage two months ago again after 10 years yeah. to now yeah. i think i am slowly opening creating a new neural pathway okay i really do i i because i notice that like i while i am nervous i still am able to tell myself like 
No, you're excited. Can you tell you're nervous like, on stage? I can't, but not about your no, clips. No, 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 not on like, stage. I'm like, your clips. Once I get on stage, I'm not nervous. Okay. It's, it's just, just the before. Up. Okay. And then yeah. after, how do you feel after? Great. Okay. So, but it's the, it, my, my body, I always have like a like very high cortisol and adrenaline already. So yeah. like when I'm, before I go up, it's like floods my body. And I think it's just like, ah, my heart goes so fast. Jesus it freaks me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sucks. Does Tommy come and watch you? He has, yeah, yeah. He loves it. Does that make you more nervous? No, okay. actually, I'm more comforted when like I have a family member there. Oh, okay, which is weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, I take a beta blocker before I go on stage because yes. like I'm like my heart going like 200 is not like the best. No, no. <laughs> I don't think it is. Have you been to the hospital for that? I used to go to the hospital all the time. Oh my God. I've literally, Steph, I've had literally every test done on my heart because I told the doctors ever since I was like seven years old, I was like, I'm having heart attacks. But I was having panic attacks. And they were like, That's And they were like, you're having panic attacks. And I was like, no, I'm having a heart attack. And I was so convinced. And even to this day, I'll still go to like my cardiologist like once every other month. And, be like, and I, I need an echo. I need a stress test. Like, I know I'm having heart attacks. Like, although it is really weird because one time he did check, like, you know, they check your blood when you have a, when you have a heart problem and they check for like troponin. I'm going to say the word wrong. Troponin levels. They can correct me on that. Um, and lactate. And basically, like, when your heart is under a lot of stress, you release like um, – certain chemicals from your heart and you can show up in your blood right so i was <laughs> i was actually exercising a lot at one point and like doing like 200 crunches a night yes and it like fucked up my heart like it made my heart like my heart was working too hard or something because my blood test came back weird and he was uh -huh. like what are you doing differently and i was like i'm exercising he's like okay maybe like don't do it so Hold hard it you know what i mean like chill i was doing like 200 yeah. crunches a night and then like I uh, so basically what happens is like my heart starts racing out of nowhere and my heart rate is always high and I would get like dizzy when I stand up and so for so many years doctors are like oh you just have anxiety you just have anxiety and then I heard about this disorder called POTS which, which is called postural orthostatic tachycardia which basically Jesus. means when you stand up the blood it doesn't make it back up to your heart quick enough so you get dizzy and you get a fast heart rate and your blood pressure drops and so I started like monitoring every time I would stand up. And so I'd be sitting in bed and my heart rate would be like 64. Mm -hmm. And then I'd stand up and it'd go to 150. And That's I was like, nuts. that doesn't sound right just from no. standing up and walking around. Mm -hmm. So I recorded this a couple of times and I sent it to my cardiologist and he made me an appointment at UCLA. And he's like, this is the only place you can get this test done where they test for POTS, which yeah, is basically yeah. they put you on this table and they tilt you all different ways and check your blood pressure and see how your blood is flowing Jesus, through your body. It's like a fucking CO to C. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I go into the, I go to um, UCLA and they did, uh, they did some tests on me and they were like, yeah, you have POTS. So like this whole time I thought that I just had an anxiety disorder, but I have this um, so postural what do you take for orthostatic. This? So, so every there's time, no cure. Every time you stand up, you get this. Yeah. Every single time, yeah. it, every my so, heart rate goes boom, like crazy. So do you try not to sit down sometimes? Do you try to stay no, up? No, I try to like or, you have to like get get up slowly and kind of just like take your time. Otherwise, like because I thought it was all anxiety my whole life. I'm standing up and my heart's going so fast, and I was like, this doesn't this make is, sense. Like I'm healthy, nuts. I'm thin. Like yeah, I don't get it. Fuck? Like I'm not like an overweight like yeah, freak. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I don't get it. Like what I take care of myself why is this happening so yeah so it's just a disorder so what happens if you're on set acting i have this happen too it's horrible so i'm on beta blockers that's the only thing that, that helps, that, that helps it so but you have to tell like if you're acting something you have to be like by the way when i stand up well I'm a lot of people with this disorder pass out oh actually i'm sorry not a lot of people 15 percent of people pass out it's a lot it's a lot. It's a lot. But yeah. I, I thank God don't pass out. But I do get the like the super fast heart rate and then dizzy and then like confused sometimes. So it's like I get kind of freaked out, you know. And then what That's happens fucked. is the heart rate spiking makes my anxiety spike and then I can go into like yeah. a spiral. But like, yeah, so they put you on beta blockers and that's it. And compression socks and there's no cure. That's it. That's it. So Isn't that's that crazy. That's, People just live with this, and there's girls who have it. It's very more, much more common in women. It's called just okay. if you look up just POTS, P-O-T-S. It's much more common in women, but there's people that have it that are in like wheelchairs and stuff because it's that bad. yeah, it's so bad that they like literally can't even get up because they get so sick, and it just comes along with Jesus all this other shit. Christ. Just makes you really tired and like you know you're fatigued. You wouldn't do anything. Yeah, you really don't. I'd never get up. I know, but I, I'd sit for life. But I do, I do, I push myself. You for know what I mean? For fuck's sakes. That's why I'm always afraid. What of What if you're in bed when you're having sex? Can you like? 
Is that uh, effective or is it because you're already like No, down? that's fine. That's okay. fine because usually I'm just laying down. Okay. And... <laughs> but I was like, if you're like riding on top or something, is that like an immediate sit up or something? Like that would just you pass on the middle sex. He's like, what the fuck is going on? I just fall asleep on his oh dick. My, I'm all, yeah. Within my mouth. <laughs> um, that's no, thank God it hasn't like affected. But yeah, but any kind of things like any, but you're right, like any kind of physical exertion. So like, I used to play soccer when I was younger and I would literally be able to run for like two seconds and then I'd get like super winded and I was like, why am I yeah, so winded? Like what? I'm like shape. so in such yeah. good shape. I had like a 12 pack when I was like seven. Like it was crazy. And like fuck. my parents never looked into it. And now I know why. I said like, so you're exercise resistant with this disorder. Basically any kind of like uh, cardio you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to only do like light weights Wait, and shit. things like that because it just exacerbates the, the heart going too fast. But they call it not a heart heart condition because it's not a heart condition it's like your blood and like the positioning of your body it's technically like autoimmune that's fucked up it's weird it's really weird and you were saying you kind of have like autoimmune shit going i have on hives too, they've right? gone down now they were here earlier but i was saying you've <laughs> I, I, oh I was like God. i have hives. like well i have hives you're like what the <laughs> fuck don't you have you literally i've never had somebody come on here and literally some people go i broke my arm once in a scooter you're like well actually it started when i was born with my feet backwards and then it's just it hasn't stopped like you've it, this actually is fucked up okay it's so tell me it's been a nightmare okay but crazy. i don't really have hives i got them one time randomly for two months straight mm. out of nowhere in my 20s but not like your little baby hives i'm mm -hmm. talking about big juicy Wells. Yellow, like raised? yellow, yellow, raised welts. I wish my dad, you know, I'll ask my dad if he still has the picture because I this was back before Instagram and all that. This was like never seen them 2006. Yellow. Well, because you know how to get itchy. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So it was like okay, the, yeah. so for two months, I had these giant welty hives that were literally this big covering my whole body. I looked like I had leprosy. Oh, yeah. No, it was like, like, like bumps. Toe? Yeah, all over except for my face, just my chest, my back. And uh -huh. at the time I was working for a stylist, a fashion stylist, because I like went to fashion school as like a backup thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> hilarious. Um, so then I, I got booked on a job by myself to mm -hmm. style Paris Hilton. Mm -hmm. And I was covered in these fucking leprosy welts. Like literally, <laughs> no matter something? what I wore, and it was hot as fuck. It was like 100 degrees. It was literally summertime. <laughs> And I was like, I can't wear long sleeves. It's no, literally a hundred degrees. We're shooting this like sh TV show. Like I will be sweating. I'll be dying. I have to wear a tank top, but I'm literally look like I have leprosy. Like I literally, people would like, if you saw me, like, there were so many welts. Like I looked like I had a disease for sure. Like it didn't Did look like something? hives. This is how nice Paris Hilton is. And I've been, we're friends now. Like, so this is like from yeah. years ago before we even became friends. She literally shows up. I'm covered in these nasty, like literally my full hands, arms, everything. Oh my God. And I told the producers it was hives, so like they could tell her, like, yeah, I'm yeah. like I just have hives. Like, yeah. <laughs> don't let her be scared. Like, you know, because yeah, like, I'm like, it is very you. scary yeah, looking. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm yeah. a monster, you know? Yeah. Um, but she came in and she literally goes, hey. And she gave me a hug and like touched the welts. Oh my God. Like, that's how fucking nice she is. That is nice. She's so sweet. Like, Listen, I'm not that nice. No, no, no. If I saw some freak, no. like loser <laughs> stylist, yeah, like, yeah, with full hives, with, like, I'd be like, get me another one. Fucking hives, I'd be like, don't come near me. Like, what yeah, is yeah, that? Like, I don't even these. know what the fuck. fuck that is. Like, she gave me a fucking hug, dude, and she was like, it's so nice to meet you, and I was like nice to meet you and, and i was like, so I'm intimidated <laughs> i was trying so hard not to scratch i was taking any histamines like to try to get him to go down oh, but God. and then they all ended up telling me that it was an anxiety response i was like what that's never ha everything's anxiety by the way uh -huh. when you go to the doctor as a woman it's mm -hmm. anxiety that's what that's what they said my my hives were stressed i was like <laughs> i'm like i'm getting stressed out in my sleep i wake yeah. up and I'm like, oh, they are like no Okay, well, I need to hear other your other utis all right so i thought i had uti the other day oh god so i get chronic yeast infections it's very annoying, but because yeah. in Canada uh, they get they you can just buy the pill. Yeah. In a regular in a regular pharmacy, which yeah. is what they fucking should do out here. And you I don't, don't know the fuck need a prescription. Need prescription. It's so yeah, stupid. Yeah, yeah. Do you know Wish though or Wisp the app? Uh, you can get one on there. It. It's like a it's like a it's an app where you can like say what your symptoms are. You pay for it and they deliver it to your house. Sis, you got to get boric acid. 
I take no, so I have I take Demonus those pills. Oh, Demonus, help, yeah, yeah, whatever. But that that's is, more yes. for UTI. So what is boric acid? Boric acid. So helps. boric acid. There's a company, and I'm not even paid or anything. There's a there's a brand, and or the name of it's just Lady Killer. It's boric acid suppositories. Okay, it, you, you, you pop one of those ups your your VB and well, just oh. leave it. It just sits in there. And oh, okay. Dissolves. Okay. So, okay. So, suppository me, me see always think butt, and I can't. No, no, get no. The butt in your stuff pussy. In. Why okay. would you put it in your ass? I don't know, because I always thought a suppository is a butt thing. I was like, I'm not putting it in my butt. Okay, I'll do that. You just put once everything a day? in your butt. Yep, you do once a day for seven days. It says it on there. It's called. Oh, oh when you have it. When you have it. Okay, okay. It gets rid of it. Oh no, forever. So- Forever. For, never at, like, I have literally used to get them and I don't get them at all okay, anymore. I need this then because. And this anyone is, who's okay. watching this will also say boric acid okay, is amazing. Okay. It's called Lady Killer. Okay, I'm actually going to get this for you. It's the best. It's the best. And you just stick it up there to get Target. Okay. And you just let it dissolve and, and it kills it. everything. Okay, and it's good that. for you, actually. It balances your pH, it's mm-hmm. all natural. Okay. So it's not chemicals. Because I took the Florenza pill. Yeah, 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 is. yeah. So I get them in Canada and I, my, my sister and my mom, whenever they come to buy me, like, Packs of it. Yeah, yeah. So it went away. Because I took the pill, it took, it took two days. But the boric acid, you'll just stay, you'll, it'll cre- create an even pH. Yes, for I you. need this. Yeah. Because um, I, I get them like for an I, I used to too. Yeah, it's just like, I usually get it for my period, like, like yeah. a week for a period, I get it, and then it goes away, and I'm like, yeah. oh, what the fuck is this? But I bring that up because your UTI thing. Oh, yeah. So I, <laughs> oh, yeah. Another great story. <laughs> this, this I've been through hell. Like, this, people don't realize. No, this is actually, like, I'm not, I'm not just saying this. I've done, well, how many episodes there? 110? Yeah. This is this is the most insane one I think. Like I've had crazy stories, but you <sighs> no one has had this many back to back health issues and you're it's still alive. Horrible. I know barely. I feel like I'm just going to like drop dead. So like so Eat some popcorn. I know. <laughs> I'm going to have my banana now. Um no, just start sucking on the banana. Yeah. I'm like that's why you're sick. You just suck the banana, you don't even need it. Um you're like I eat it yeah. with the peel on. Yeah, you're, you're like, like mm, that's, that's why where yeah. this all started. <laughs> that's um, why you're sick. No, so so this happened when I was like 18. I lived out here by myself. My whole family's in Pennsylvania. You moved here at that young? I, well, I moved here when I was 17, Jesus right after high school Christ. I came out. Right. Yeah, by myself. I didn't even know anybody. My step grandparents lived in Whittier, which isn't very close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 18 by myself, I get a horrible, horrible, horrible UTI from sex or just from sex. Okay. But I didn't know that I had a UTI, which is really strange because normally you have crazy symptoms, right? Mm-hmm. So. I had no symptoms. I didn't have the pee, the burning with the urine. Which is I didn't the main have one. I didn't have uh, you know, uh, fever. I didn't right. have any pain. I didn't have any blood in my urine. I had nothing, okay? I usually drank like four diet cokes a day and I didn't drink any water. Okay. Like I was in a bad place, right? <laughs> and I was having sex and I was it was not good. Okay, okay. so That was the precursor. So I'm living with three girls in this house on June Street in Hollywood. And we're getting Taco Bell. We had a great night. We're all laughing, blah, blah, blah. We stayed up late. We go to bed. At like 4 o'clock in the morning, I wake up because I feel like someone stabbed me in my back. Like I literally woke up with such an insane pain. It felt like someone took a knife and stabbed it in my back and twisted it. And I was like, ah, I woke up out of my sleep, like, oh, what the fuck? And I fell on the floor. Oh That's how God. bad it was. I rolled onto the floor and I was like, oh my God. And I could like barely move and I was sweating and I was super hot and I was screaming in pain and my roommates come in and they're like, what the fuck's wrong with you, dude? Like you were fine a couple hours mm-hmm, ago, what's happening? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know, call an ambulance. And they're like, are you sure you don't wanna just like chill? And, and I was like, like oh, no. fuck an ambulance. Like I knew something was really yeah. wrong, right? So the ambulance comes and my fucking asshole roommate goes, uh, she was fine earlier. I feel like she's just a hypochondriac and said that to the EMT. And so then the EMT thinks I'm just a hypochondriac. And so they take me in the ambulance. I'm like, I'm having crazy, what's it called, flank pain. It was my kidney. So I I didn't know that at the time. So I just had a crazy stabbing pain in my back and I was sweating and I was so hot. Yeah, how do they not notice that you're fucking sick right now? Sweating. Yeah. And so they take me to Hollywood Presbyterian and it was so packed. I think it was like a Friday night and there was all these like crackheads there and people like, you know, all the Hollywood people that are getting Mm -hmm. drunk and getting hurt and Mm -hmm. all these people in the, the emergency room was full as fuck and so they take me in from the from the 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 ambulance and they roll me on a gurney into the hallway and they leave me there and i don't go through triage and i don't see a nurse and i don't see a doctor i don't see anyone i'm not even in fucking line i don't even know if i'm checked in yeah and i'm laying there on this gurney and i'm when i tell you this pain stuff like the pain was so insane that like 
I felt like I was going to pass out yeah. from the pain. I'd never experienced pain like that. And I have cramps, like and period cramps, several whatever, other like several other <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. pain was like, Unreal. I can't even talk about how, I can't describe it physically. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like reeling and this nurse comes up to me and she goes, if you don't, she's like, we have real sick people here. If you don't be quiet, I'm going to move you into another room. And I wasn't seeing her anything yet. And you're like, I'm not making this up. I was like, why does everyone think I'm fucking lying? Yeah, like, what this the is crazy. fuck? So then I call my step-grandparents, and thank God for them. They drive up from Whittier. They're, my poor step-grandparents, like they were in like their 80s. It like, sounds like 5 a.m. It's like so, so like, early. The they fuck? drive yeah. up from Whittier, and they demand that I be seen. They're like, she's so sick. Someone has to see her. So the nurse literally rolls her eyes. I will not forget this. Rolls her eyes at me. And they go, okay, we'll put her through triage. They take my temperature. It's 104. They're like, oh. They're hmm. like, huh. oh shit, uh, can we get blood? And they get my blood. Huh. I'm fully septic. My blood is completely septic. I had a UTI that spread to my kidney and has now created sepsis so badly that they didn't even know if I was gonna live. So what is, explain, I'm, I'm done, what is sepsis? So sepsis is basically when your blood gets so infected f from an infection that it becomes completely toxic. So all your blood is oxygen. So my mom, well, not all of it, because I was still okay. alive, okay. but yeah, most yeah, yeah. of it okay. had a lot of, had sepsis in the blood. So what were they bad. fucking, like at this point, were they not like, I'm so, so sorry. So then they panicked. No one apologized yet. They panicked. So they panicked. So all of a sudden, I, re I just remember, and I barely remember it, because I was kind of in and yeah. out, because yeah. I was so, so sick. Yeah. I remember them just rushing me to the ICU and doing all these things to me as like blood, to giving me blood, taking blood. And then they called uh -huh. my dad who lives in Philadelphia and they were like, and my mom, and they were like, she's really, really, really sick with sepsis and she's in the ICU and we don't know if she's gonna live because we got- They to, said that. Yeah, oh. and I heard them on the phone and they were like, we gotta give her crazy doses of antibiotics and we have to give her so much that like it's a dangerous amount oh, of what oh, they had to give me because I was already God. so septic. So I remember them saying they wanted to wait until my dad got there before they gave me like super heavy, heavy doses just in case like, you know, I die. Yeah. And I was so out of it, but they drug you. They gave you like, they gave me like morphine. I was on all kinds of stuff. So I was kind of like in a floaty state. Uh -huh. And I remember the lady who was in bed next to me was this Asian lady. And she fucking, oh, I'll get to her in a second. Anyway, so it literally I'm, I'm in the bed and I'm like in this fucking weird floaty state and my dad comes in, they're like, okay, we're gonna give her like this crazy Levaquin. It was, so it was like the next a, day he crazy flies in. antibiotic. Yeah, yeah, so he flies in, my mom didn't even come. Um, <laughs> dead. She's like, okay, whatever. Um, so they give me this drug called Levaquin, which is just like a super strong antibiotic and they had to give it to me in a really high dose and it can be really dangerous. And But it, I was already so, like, so, so fucking, sick that yeah. it was like there was no choice. And I lived, obviously, yeah. and um, I was in the hospital for quite a few days, and there was an Asian lady next to me, and she was really sick, and we were sharing a room, and I remember that she was really stubborn, and she was like cursing in her language, and she got so mad because she didn't want to have a catheter in yeah she fucking ripped her catheter out and you know how they put a catheter in they put a catheter in they blow up the balloon no, yeah so you can't pull it out you gotta they gotta deflate the balloon. they gotta deflate the balloon for you to take it out okay she saw me take mine out because i got one of the things to deflate the balloon and take uh -huh. it out so she thought she could just pull it out she ripped it out and she was like oh my god it's like a nightmare and I think she ended up dying. I they the closed hospital? the curtain, not from the that, but from something else. Oh, um, God, yeah, it was, this is hell. It was really scary. But I was eighteen years old. Eighteen years old, and I was in a really floaty state. Like it gets kind of, kind of crazy when like, you're in the hospital and you're like dying. They kind of just pump you full of um, morphine so that you're just so you like don't basically. Even know. So like, like on what are you heroin. thinking when you hear that? Like, could you actually take in that you might die? No, because I was just like, and ah. I'm so scared of dying. It's my biggest fear. Same. Biggest I cry, fear. I cry myself. Yeah, yeah I think about like how I'm not going to be alive no, one day. No, no, and no, I, okay, so we're going to spiral. We, we, we can't go down this road. We both are spiraling no, 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 on no, no, the no. podcast. I got a big problem. Yeah, with yeah. It. yeah so yeah, it's so my yeah, biggest yeah. fear, and yeah, like okay. I, I think about it all the time. It rules my life. But the weirdest thing is, when you're in the hospital and it's actually happening to you, they give you so much medicine that you're not really aware. I mean, maybe I wasn't because I was so sick. 
but I don't remember being very aware. Uh-huh. You know, like I heard them talking and I could hear them saying any say this stuff, yeah. but I didn't have the strength to respond and I didn't um I don't remember feeling um like scared. Yeah. I remember just being like out of just it. so out of it what was your dad do doing when he came was he like fucking my crying? dad's like, like so calm and normal like my dad like, like doesn't cry he's like my dad worked for the is. government he's like hello <laughs> he like came shakes in. your hand yeah yeah how are you he's sweetie? like you'll be all right on the phone yes hold yeah. on government my daughter's dying yeah uh, give me a minute yeah <laughs> my dad's like very very um He's like goofy and funny, but he's like very tough. Like he doesn't really cry or like get affected by stuff. That's fucked up. It's really weird. He's strong. He's like very tough. Um, but yeah, no, he could tell he was sad. Like he looked yeah. like he was sad. He was so just sitting there. in the chair staring at me. Yeah. <laughs> I was just staring back at him. Okay, so then I finally start getting better at like uh-huh. the end of the week. The medicine's working. Like okay, you're gonna be okay. God. You're making a full recovery. Okay. They got rid of the se- the sepsis was going away. Okay. I started to kind of come back around. Um, you know, I started to feel like present again mm-hmm. because my mind just was so not present. Yeah. I was like kind of like fuzzed in the back, up. fuzzed yeah. out. So I started to come back and that remember that nurse who had come up to me in the hallway and told me to shut up because yep. there were real sick people uh-huh. there. She came up and apologized. Did she? <gasps> well, well, well. And she's like, what can I get you? Can I get you a balloon? She, well, she, first she came up to me and she said, I, she kneeled down at my bed and she just said, I wanted to just tell you that I'm so sorry. Huh. I didn't realize that you were really sick. One of your friends had told the EMTs that you're a hypochondriac. Fuck so, that friend, I know, That's I know. So I'm not friends with her anymore. Thank God. And and she said one of your friends had told the EMT that you're a hypochondriac, so we thought that you weren't really sick. And I was like, okay, but I'm okay. still so out of it. And yeah, she's like, okay, she, I almost died. She's like, <laughs> LOL. I, she's like, can I bring you a peanut butter and jelly or a bologna sandwich? That's the option? <laughs> I'm sorry that you almost died. PB&J or bologna. Like, what the fuck? How about three grand, bitch? What the hell's going on? Give me cash. Isn't that horrible? I can't believe she apologized. She did apologize. I, I'm, I'm grateful that she did apologize. That, that's and she was really... really sorry, I could tell. She literally kneeled at my bed and, like, took mm-hmm. my hand and was like, I'm so sorry. Because you, can't you, like, get sued? If, if someone had yeah. heard her... Or yeah. if I had like a self, like if I had been able, like back mm-hmm. then the phones were just the razors. So you yeah, couldn't yeah, like yeah. record people and stuff. Because I right? think doctors now can't, like my sister had a um, uh, IUD put in. Yeah. And the the nurse practitioner pushed it in too far and it roamed around her body and she started to move. Oh yeah, it's it unreal. They told her she might not be able to get pregnant. Oh yeah, it was in her intestines floating around. And she went back, she's like, that person did that. And she came in, she's like, well, that happens. She's like, it doesn't happen. Has it ever happened ever before? Like she was bleeding so oh badly. My no God. apology. And she tried to like sue that she's like, I'm pissed. Like she's like, if if the nurse had been like, you know, I'm sorry, nothing. Fully cut her open and take it out. Like, Did they crazy. cover the surgery or her getting it taken out? It's Canada, so it isn't. Oh. Yeah. And what about uh what about like she didn't win anything for them? She got nothing. Nothing. But she's fine. She can get pregnant now, she's fine. But it was like fucked. But that I can't believe apology is wild. So like if if I had back in the day had like an iPhone and had recorded mm-hmm. her saying mm-hmm. that. I'm sure. Also, I want this bitch. Yeah. That fucking said that to EMT. What are you trying to flirt with EMT? Why? What? What is the purpose of that? What would it know. matter? I've always had like weird friends. That's like so I've always sad. had friends that I feel like secretly hate me or like. Try oh, that to, person like, hates you. There's no way. Yeah, or like they're like, and I don't want to say jealous, but like almost like they mm-hmm. like want my life for some reason. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, like, I don't like know. you see my life. I've, I live in the hospital. I know. I'm like, <laughs> you want my life with my fucking jaw chopped off and my fucking pots disorder and my fucking Jesus. whatever else. I won't even go into the other stuff. Like, well, I want to ask you. Okay, so one of my yeah. favorite questions on this podcast, which I don't even know how you are going to answer this, is what's the worst body thing you've ever heard? I feel like it's everything you just gone through <laughs> I'm so tired like I'm and it sucks because like I know I, I come off like I'm great but like I'm so sick of being sick like I'm sick a lot like inside my body so like when's the last time you're in the hospital um, I wasn't in the hospital in a really long okay. time, but I like, you know, uh, I went with Tommy to go get full body MRIs. 
because okay. he's 60 and I thought, you know, Is he really? yeah, my husband's 60. Oh, and so I thought, you know, he should get one because, you know, he's been, he, he was one. drinking and using for so many years mm -hmm. and he's sober now. Um, but, you know, we'll just see if anything's wrong, right? So we go to this place and we get these full body MRIs and I'm like, you know, oh God, like he's gonna have all this shit and like he's gonna have cancer and he's gonna be so sick and what are we gonna do? They're gonna find tumors, they're gonna find like AIDS, like yeah. what are they gonna find, right? Like I don't know what they're gonna find, right? I mean, he used to like literally inject Jack Daniels into his yeah, veins, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get these full body MRIs, I get one too, and the doctor calls and she goes, hi, it's Dr. Michelle, I have the results of the MRIs. And I said, oh God, should I get Tommy? Like, it's a bad news, how are we gonna break it to yeah. him? You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like, yeah, I'm all yeah, preparing yeah. to uh -huh. tell Tommy. And she goes, oh no, Tommy's completely fine. We didn't have anything, any findings on his MRIs. No. And you're like, hmm? And I said, okay, cool, why are you calling then? And she goes, your MRI is, has a lot of findings. <laughs> a lot of findings. Bro. I have a cyst in the middle of my brain. Your brain? In the middle of my brain. What is going on? I don't Who, know. What did you do in a past I life? I think my this mom is psychotic. drank like when she was pregnant with me and now I have all these problems. I but know other moms that drank when they're pregnant. It's so weird. My mother drank. I I'll even pregnant. show you. I have like the whole write up. So I have like a cyst in the middle of my brain. My liver is full of cysts. I have polycystic ovarian syndrome, which I already knew I had, which yeah. is PCOS. Yeah, I already yeah, yeah, knew yeah. I had that. Endometriosis. Um, and then I have a spine disease where basically my spine is like curving and I'm going to be developing like a hunchback disorder. And I'm no. like, what can I do? And they're like, you need to like go to a chiropractor now weekly or whatever. And I haven't even been doing that because I'm scared of chiropractors. But I'm oh. like, they're like, your spine is basically going like this. So it's like, it's called spondylosis or something oh like God. that. Uh. Spine disease. And then I, <laughs> it just keeps going. I have, a, I have a big giant lesion in my breast, which I already got checked out. They don't think it's cancer. Okay. They didn't. They didn't biopsy it, but they gave me my first uh, mammogram, and they don't think it's cancer. They're like, we don't think. I'm like, okay, as long as you well, don't think. Yeah. Well, right? what the hell? Can we so, make sure? Yeah, I know. They're like, we can biopsy it, but we don't think we need to. So I'm just like, whatever. I'll leave it. So I have a lesion <laughs> in my titty. Uh, what else did I have? Okay, yeah, that's this. What does this sissy rain do? It just sits there. It just sits there, and so it's small. It's like it's like three millimeters, so it's super okay. tiny. But they said. I said, well, what do I do about these things? And they said, first of all, like some people just have cysts in their body. Like that's just, that's just what it is. Okay, you yeah. know, like some people are just cysty and I am one of those people. And of I said, okay, so of course I am. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, what else? Like what else? Like literally all I want to do is just feel good. Um, so then I said, okay, what can I do? And they're like, nothing. It's just how it is. And I said, well, what do I, how do I know? They're like, you just have to keep an eye on it. If it gets bigger. I said, how am I going to keep an eye on it? The inside of my head. And they said, you'll know, you'll start getting neurological symptoms. I'm like, like what? <laughs> I can't handle this. I, just one I don't day, know. I don't know. I just one day have multiple personality disorder. Like, what's yeah, gonna what happen? The fuck. They're like, you'll start experiencing crazy headaches, and you'll start getting confused. And they're like, and then you go to the hospital, and that's how they'll know. And I said, and then what do they do? And she said, they stick a needle in the middle of the top of your brain where my cyst is, and they drain it. <laughs> Do you, do you do drugs? Do you drink? No, I'm and you're sober. sober. So I don't you're, do you're, any you're drugs. You're going and around your life sober like sober. this. Sober. And people say this to me all the time, like, she's on cocaine. I do nothing. No, no, I'm not asking because of that. No, I'm I asking know. because... I'm completely sober. I, I would be able to sit in my thoughts with I don't this. even drink coffee. I can't even have caffeine. Like, I have no cope, nothing to cope. That's what I'm saying. You have no coping. Yeah. So you're day to day, mm -hmm. every morning, oh, I'm just like living in my, my head, in I got my a brain. in my tit. Yeah. Day -day -day. Like, this is fucked. It sucks, dude. This but is I crazy. I try not to think about it too much, but like I said, like, I don't feel good a lot, but I just try to go okay, about yes. my life anyway. But you're, you're, you're a funny, <laughs> you're beautiful, you're married to a very famous rock star man. And he's that, like, why are you sick all Yeah, the and time? you're like, I don't know. I, I, that would piss me off so badly, too, the fact that he's been like literally disease know, smoke his whole life, too. so... Smoked his whole life, just drank all his whole life up until five he years ago when I got him sober. Nothing, not even a fucking ingrown toenail. This guy, <laughs> I swear to God, I was like, this is so disappointing. And by the way, like, feels so good, has so much energy, like more than me. He's sixty and he's like Rock up at fucking time, eight a.m. like Christ. doing his trees, like bebopping around, can drink whatever caffeine, whatever, drinks seven macchiatos, has no palpitations, like just living his life, and I'm over. <laughs> here just like just like, gyrating just, like, just off life this is fucked up yeah is it when your family about those things no i'm the only this is one it. well my brother has 
my brother has schizophrenia so okay. it's like okay. you know so i think there's something. like neurological stuff that yeah. goes on but uh and but you just you take nothing no medicine i take an just antidepressant okay. and that's it and that's the all that's in the beta blocker but no drugs like no like no like you know I no. want to take drugs now. Listen to I your know. fucking story. People are, who are listening to this episode are gonna be like, "I'm going I to don't do." I even smoke weed. I can't smoke the weed because weed, the, I think, would freak you out, though. Yeah. Well, I used to back in the day, but then I told you because when schizophrenia runs in your family, they say not to smoke weed because oh, it, tra- it can open something. it, the doorway, to it. So I was like, "All right." I'm never going to complain for the remainder of my life. <laughs> Anytime I like, I literally hit my elbow so hard the other day I cried, and I was like, "Why me?" And I'm like, "I'm gonna if I ever do anything, I'm like Brittany." I would literally feel Brittany. so happy if like I could just wake up and like feel rested and like have a coffee. Do you sleep like, well or no? No, I'm up all night because I like I, I think because of the anxiety and like whatever all, all the part of the pots and whatever you get like cortisol spikes and so like yeah. at night I'm very much awake and then. I get tired around like 3 a.m. and then I have to sleep for like 12 hours. Oh, and so I'll sleep till like 1 or 2 p.m. and then wake up and like I'm still tired even after sleep. <laughs> it's it's kind of I can't handle this. It's weird. I mean, I I've, I've gone and worked with like homeopathic doctors too okay, because I'm like help? I'm constantly trying to find answers. Yeah. Um they give you like natural stuff, okay. you know, like they try to give me like um passion flower to go to sleep which does help. Okay, okay. Like this passion flower tincture so calms okay. my you know they got ashwagandha and then like yeah. for the heart they um there's this stuff called crotagus oxycantha so like i've been down like you've the done, healing yeah, you've road you've done all this i mean i've yeah. been down the healing road you know doing acupuncture i did acupuncture okay, yeah, yeah. um so you know i mean i i try but right now i'm just kind of like i just put it at the back of my head and i just kind of like full steam ahead and if i just collapse i collapse i'll collapse and that'll be it anyone know? listening to this fucking podcast needs to shut the fuck up and never complain again i feel like it's like, crazy. this is crazy it's crazy i mean and I, then and on top of it you're a woman on social media yeah. doing stand-up yeah so on top of what i normally complain about is being trolled and being called oh, fat and, I get gross. Hated and it's on. like so you're getting hated on on oh, top yeah. of all this and i'm like mm, this guy said i'm fat and you're like i can't stand up i'm gonna fucking fall oh my over. god people are so mean to me too like like they're it's like you're cross-eyed. You're no, you're, a you're, woman. you're, it's matter. you're horrible. Yeah. You should mm-hmm. you should never do comedy mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. You should go mm-hmm. back in your house. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. but I'm like mm-hmm. I just know it's like you know it's, I don't, it's jealous trolls. Yeah. I have dealt is. with that for a year. Mean people for years. I had know? a guy today literally comment and I, I laughed out loud because he was like, "Where the fuck is the joke? Why are people laughing at this?" I clicked on his profile. He's following me. Oh yeah. Why are you following all me? All the people that talk shit on me, every single one of them still follows me, which I'm like. If I didn't no. like someone enough to say something, I, I would never follow. Them. I wouldn't be following. Every day I come them. up with your feed. Wouldn't that be weird? Like I don't get it. I blocked them. If you hate, stupid. if you hate someone, then why? Why look at it? Follow them. That's I, like, I don't. The amount of people I unfollow on Instagram because I can't look at their shit. I'm like I can't. I stopped like once I went through like the near death thing. I kind of got to this point in my life where I'm like, I feel like people, you know, they're not gonna like you. I feel like a lot, like, I mean, my online presence is, can be kind of annoying. I feel like once you meet me in person, maybe mm. I'm a little better. I don't know. But <laughs> who knows? But anyway, so I just feel like if, if someone doesn't know you personally, yeah. it's not personal. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's, yeah, that, so I like that. you just kind of have yeah, to yeah, live yeah, that, nice that way. Because if they don't know you personally, then it's not a personal yeah. thing, you know? Because if they met you, they'd love you. Because you're, lo- well, you're lovable and hilarious well, we'll and see. great. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, we've wrapped this up, and I can't believe. Yeah. I, I'm like, I, no, <laughs> no, it was literally the most start to finish. Like, this is where I, I started this podcast because I knew people had stories like this. But you have you have by far exceeded um, anyone who's come on here. Aww. With, with And then I watch all your podcasts and you say that at the end of everyone. I've, one. I've never saying. I think I had one Jason signs because he had a crazy accident. Yeah, yeah. But this you just have the amount of. It's not. Please follow. Follow Aww. Brittany. Go where? Follow where? Can they find I'm you? I'm just Instagram? on Instagram. Just Brittany Furlan on Instagram. Okay, and they can yeah. see you live. Yeah, Come see you live. Yeah, I put the link in my Instagram bio when I'm performing. Yeah, yeah just all around LA. Yeah, well, and I'll maybe we've... one day somewhere else when I start to not have heart attacks. So. I was like, I'll bring you on the road if you want to come with me sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, yeah, <laughs> I, <don't know> if... <laughs> I just <laughs> die when I'm on tour with you. Like, You're like, terrified. I don't know what to do with this body. Jesus <laughs> I Christ! I, like, I don't know if I can handle this. Oh my God! Can you imagine? Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for having me. Please fucking follow her. Follow the instagram page watch the youtube follow my youtube yeah sending your body stories and uh thank you so much and don't fucking complain about your life okay bye <laughs> <laughs>